So, there's a study by the Ohio State University and it found that we emotionally connect easier to fictional characters than real life persons. So we invest in our pretend friends rather than pay interest to our real ones. Our reflections read like chalk outlines of dreams deferred and it sounds like misspent coins on wishing wells. So we imagine in career and sleepwalk through job applications and validate our lives by comparing it to those around us, but we alienate those around us so we end up measuring ourselves by the people we see on TV screens using the remote to channel flip realities. This, 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 this is as close as some of us will ever get to having control in our lives. We live in a world where technology displays the last vestiges of humanity in crisp high def, sold our souls for the latest apps, we measure progression by the point .0 versions we keep in our pockets live lives as virtual tragedies. We say these eulogies over flat screen coffins, death was never so sparkling and false religion, never more equipped for the YouTube generation, desperation and please stigmata our hands so we carry devices in our palms that can easily touch swipe our faith, carry holy water before the TSA takes it never realizing we just got x-rayed with the mark of the beast so rosaries are offered on Amazon for just one click we scream in text with demon possessed fingers because we can't find the right words to say in live conversation so we create exorcisms that have us tweeting in different tongues because our friends on Facebook aren't as trustworthy as our followers. See, religion means respect for what's sacred. Our souls are sacred and our body is a temple so let me breathe in metaphors and similes like Judgment Day is here and poets are in charge of who gets into heaven. I want this microphone to bookmark my sins, be the echo reminder. I've got a list of dreams left to fulfill. I want to look at life and fantasize in sonnets, tell symphony-like soliloquies. I want to read with Emily Dickinson. I want to feel Edgar Allan Poe scratching his hands through the floor of my conscience, exercising me of trapped demons, devils, screaming while crumbling in the dust of Langston Hughes so you get enthused in your soul or that, that, that lump in your throat when you swallow the words of Pablo Neruda. Me gustas cuando callas porque estas como acente. It's Allen Ginsberg howling anarchy so loud your teeth vibrate revolution. There's a reason why my steps on stage feel like footprints in the sand. This is a pilgrimage that'll change your life forever. So let bent halos and clipped wings remind us that we may have fallen from grace, but we are still angels with hymns for a voice, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy stage. Thy rhymes are one with alliteration on earth as it is in heaven. See, poetry is a religious experience and our real life experiences are the notes in a song made of conviction. So ask me, ask me, why I do this, why I need three minutes in a lifetime of apathy, and I will tell you that we see the dead walking all around us, identified by Facebook timelines that read like tombstones. Never realizing, never realizing that Lazarus in his deepest sleep was awakened by words of passion. He was awakened by words he resurrected by poetry. Thank you.